Let's talk about perspective or the mathematical side of art. And perspective at its core is really just a way to imply depth in a two-dimensional plane. So if you guys have ever driven past a cornfield, which you probably have because we live in Illinois, you have noticed that those rows of crops seem to disappear against the horizon line in the background. Or if you looked at a row of trains, like the ones in this video here, notice how small those cars are in the distance versus the ones that are closest to us. If you've ever been on a road or a, a nature trail, anything, that road in the very, very, very far distance looks a lot smaller than the road directly in front of you. This is more apparent in pictures than your actual vision because you know you're standing in a three-dimensional space. You know that you're looking at a three-dimensional space. But how? Perspective is really all about lines meeting a vanishing point in the distance, like at the end of this bridge, how the end of the bridge looks significantly smaller than the side of the bridge the camera person is standing on currently or these city streets. Those blocks are parallel to one another and those streets run parallel, but they look like they intersect. In this road, for example, we're gonna pause it and look at how tiny that car is in the very far distance right in front of us versus the size of the semi here on the left. It's noticeably different, isn't it? You know how large that semi is. You know how large that car is supposed to be, but it doesn't look it. If you looked at this as just a two-dimensional piece of artwork, and you drew a car, would it really be that big? Your brain would tell you that that's wrong, but that's not it. The further something away is from us, the smaller it looks. And I'm sure you all know that, but you may not have been aware of it and how it affects drawing in particular, especially when trying to imply three dimensions in a two dimensional space. With this alleyway here, if you look at the tops of the windows and the bottoms of the door and even the sides of the sidewalk there, all of those angles seem to converge at a central point in the immediate middle of the photo, almost where the person's eye line is and where they're looking straight ahead. As you can see, like I said, the tops of the windows, the bottoms of the windows and the door, all of those aim toward a singular point. The vertical sections of these, the sides of the doors, don't change. The only difference is that they might be a little bit shorter, but their angles don't change. There's no angle to change. If we were looking at these windows from the bottom, that'd be a different story. Perspective is interesting and unique and helps a lot. And again, this is for math-minded people. This is your time to shine. Creative people have trouble with this sort of concept a lot of the time because they can't really wrap their mind around it. Perspective is imperative to drawing well and effectively and implying depth of field. So that's why we're gonna talk about it because we're gonna draw cubes and rectangles next. And one side of that cube or rectangle is definitely closer to you than the far end. So to imply the shape and depth of a cube or rectangle properly on a page, you have to know some perspective. Going into this little demonstration here, we're going to talk about how you usually draw cubes. And I bet you guys have done this at least once in your math notebook or something, in geometry if you were bored. You drew a cube exactly like this. All of these diagonal lines go in the same direction, and if you extended them infinitely, they would never intersect. But that's wrong. It's wrong because those angled sides, those little three lines that you drew diagonally toward the back, need to angle inward, and if you continued them forever, they would intersect somewhere. And that spot of intersection is what we call a vanishing point. And I'm going to reference that a lot, so remember that term. I never want to see anybody drawing cubes like this. They look flat, they look boring, and they're wrong, so don't do it. We're going to draw a nice little rectangle. And those three sides, I'm going to make them a lot longer. But the, long, the further they go back, the closer those ends need to be together. Now the back side of the rectangle has to match the sides that correlate with it. So that top edge is flat and horizontal, so the back edge has to be flat and horizontal. Always look out for parallels there, but with the three angles that we can see that connect directly to the corners, those go to the vanishing point. And this is what I'm talking about when I say that you will use your ruler a lot, because your vanishing point might be a decent ways away. Sometimes you can eyeball it and get the general direction, but the best bet is a ruler. And again, if we continued those infinitely, they would converge right at that point. 
This also works with rounder shapes like cylinders and things like that because they have straighter sides that are almost like a rectangle, essentially, but any shape that is long and has some depth and disappears into the background or is facing away from you will have that perspective versus this little cylinder here, which has no perspective. Those sides are parallel and it looks flat. It doesn't look real. The one on the right looks much realer. We don't want flat, boring shapes in here. We want interesting shapes that look real and pop up off the page. And that's our goal here, especially when we start the rectangle and cube assignment. So let's talk about light source. I'm gonna draw a little sun up here to represent my light source for this. And I'm going to draw my rectangle, erase my ends because they go a little bit far, but I need to shade this. And this is part of your weekend assignment, so pay attention. I imagine that my light source is above and behind the shape. So the side that's closest to me, that's facing me directly, the flat square that I drew to begin all of this, should be pretty dark. Light really won't reach it from back there. The bottom would likely be even darker. So if my light source were down here, my vanishing point right in the middle of it, let's say I draw my little square, use my ruler, line them up, draw those diagonal spots, connect them, straight across, straight across. Light source is coming from underneath there and behind it. So I'm going to shade my side a little bit and notice that a lot of my shading goes toward the point. That's cross contour perspective shading. That kind of will imply some depth and movement. It's a little easier, but for the flat side here that faces me, I'm just going straight across and straight up and down. That's fine. But if you have one of those diagonal sides, I recommend that you shade in the rough general direction of the vanishing point. It looks a little nicer. But since our sun is below it, um, our bottom side is our highlight. Our right side is the midtone, and that light kind of bends around the corner and heads up. And then the side facing us is another midtone. The shadow would be on top where we can't see it. Let's draw an example of how this is used practically in real drawing. I'm going to draw a street in a town. Okay, so I have my horizon line and my vanishing point, and I'm going to just make an upside down V, and it's going to be my street. And then I'm going to outline the median here. Let's not worry about breaking it up just yet. Let's make a sidewalk. And a sidewalk at its core is just a flat rectangular prism. So we're going to have those three lines, those three diagonal lines go into the point. Other side, a little bit of a lip, and straight across for the top part. Boom, one sidewalk two sidewalks. And sidewalks are divided up into slabs of concrete, but notice how the slabs get bigger the closer they are to me. The further away they get, the closer they are spaced together and the smaller they get. That is normal. Never evenly space something like that when it's disappearing into the distance. The further away it gets from you, the closer the spacing will get and the smaller the object will be until eventually you won't even be able to tell. Similar with this median here, I'm going to break it up, I'm going to have uh, pretty big dashes, but as I get further back toward the vanishing point, the smaller they get and the more they overlap until you can barely even see them. I'm going to shade the side of my sidewalk just to give it a little bit of depth and visual interest, and then I'm going to draw a building. So I'm going to start here, and this is the weird part. To draw the roof on this, or the top edge of the building, it's above the vanishing point. So that angle is going to be really steep and really far down. It, your brain will tell you that that's wrong. It will feel wrong, and that's okay, because it's actually right. Again, your brain is not your friend in this class. Don't let it be. I'm going to draw a little door. And I drew a horizontal line there at the bottom of that to look like it disappears into that building. I'm going to draw a, a tiny little window. Again, it's just another square. Just like what we've been doing. The panes of the window also obey perspective. I'm going to make a little windowsill. I make this windowsill a little bit long, and it's okay. 
like it. Anything that moves away from you or is further away from you at one end than the other must obey the rules of perspective. There are many different types of perspective, but this is one point perspective and it's what we're learning about now. This is the easiest form of perspective. And that's kind of an idea of what I'm talking about. Everything would obey this. Other windows, signs, doors, anything. All of those would obey perspective based on where the viewer in this picture is standing and what they're looking at. That horizon line will always have a vanishing point right in front of you. It doesn't have to be in the dead center of the paper, it just has to be in front of you. So going into the actual homework assignment, this is the worksheet that you have in your supply packet. And what you need to do with this is complete all of these cubes and rectangles and shade them according to a singular light source that you set at the edges of the page. So I'm gonna start with this lower left one, again, heading toward the vanishing point. Those three sides. And then down, over, perfect right angle, right there. Okay, so that's one, boom, done, amazing. And then this next one, and I'm gonna show you how a lot of people tend to do this wrong. A lot of people will let their brain trick them and think they know better and they will do it like this. Notice that these angles don't match the ones in front. Those are not parallel. Not at all. Not even close. Don't do it. Straighten those out. So with this one on the left, you can only see one side, and that's okay. The top is still there, the bottom's still there, you just can't see it based on where it's positioned in regards to the vanishing point. What I don't want to see is this, where you just connect the corners straight to the vanishing point. Don't do it. It's too long and I don't care about that. What I care about is your ability to connect those other lines to the vanishing point to a certain degree, or at least direct them toward the vanishing point, and then finish off that back edge so that it looks like a complete shape floating in space. That's what I care about. And once you have all of those drawn, pick a light source. You can put it anywhere on the page as long as it's not within the squares or near the vanishing point, just somewhere near the edges in the corner and you need to shade all of these to the best of your ability. You could grab a box from your recycling and a table lamp and do this for real if you wanted to. It's up to you. Just set your light source and have your mom hold the box and take a picture of them or something. Whatever you want to do there. Or you can just kind of wing it. But you have to consider what the light is hitting and what you can't see. Because in all of these shapes, there's at least one side, or really two, including the back edge, that you can't see. But you should have a highlight, a midtone, and some kind of shadow. If you have all three, you're doing pretty well. So with the one I just did, since my light is above and kind of behind my shapes, it's really dark on the bottom, because light wouldn't reach it down there. Now with this side shape that I'm doing, uh, I'm doing cross contour shading again, like I mentioned. Those sides that head toward the vanishing point, it really helps to do that cross contour perspective shading. It directs it and gives it a little bit more movement and makes it look more realistic because if the shading is traveling with the shape of the box, it'll look very, very real. When it comes to the frontward face of the box, or the box that was already on the page to begin with when you got this worksheet, you can just use straight across shading and straight up and down. Cross hatching, whatever you need to do, doesn't need to be angled necessarily, just as long as it's neat. But that is your entire assignment. I want every box, every cube finished. Do not connect any of them completely to the vanishing point. I want to see a back 90 degree angle edge so that it looks like a proper shape. And then you need to set a light source and either write it on there or draw a little cartoon sun, whatever you want to do, so that I know where your light source is. And then you need to shade those boxes with your three pencils. And that is your weekend assignment. This will be due Monday morning at the start of class, so we can start discussing your next project, which is a bunch of cubes and rectangles with realistic graphite shading, and it'll take up a whole page. So make sure you understand perspective before you approach that project. Seriously, if you don't get perspective, you're going to have serious trouble with the rest of this entire unit. So please, if you have issues, email me, drop me a message in Shobi, send me a picture of your worksheet and say, hey, can you check over this to make sure that I've done this right? And I can correct you as needed. Even if you want to send me a picture once you've got all of your boxes and cubes shaped, but before you shade them, 
do it. Have me check over it and then I'll say, you're good to go, start shading. So whatever you guys need to do to feel comfortable. Perspective can be very hard to wrap your mind around, but it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. It's in the hallway. It's in the tiles of this school. If you look at the floor where you're standing and then you look down at the opposite end of the hallway, those tiles are gonna look a lot smaller and the lines of those tiles are gonna meet or at least get closer. So pay attention to what you're looking at next time and think about it. All right, so good luck. Keep me posted.